Grand Prix show jumping is not for the faint of heart, and in today's show, you'll meet. Great. This is Unbridled with Susan Kane at Hits on the Hudson in Saugerties, New York. Presented by Thoroughbred, family owned and operated since 1949. Thoroughbred produces specially designed horseshoes, racing plates, and therapeutic products to enhance equine performance. Learn more at thoroughbredinc.com. Hi, I'm Susan Kane. On today's show, we'll go behind the scenes and meet the rising stars of show jumping and a few veterans too, competing for top prize in the Pfizer Million Dollar Grand Prix. Stay with us for all this and more on Unbridled. Final preparations on the Olaf Pedersen Jr. designed course revealed a series of massive jumps created by Olaf and his father specifically for this class. None of the horses or riders have seen them before. Preparing to jump a course for a million dollars can be daunting for even the most seasoned riders. In the FEI barn, the youngest entry shares his thoughts. I'm from Venezuela. I'm 19 years old. I moved to the U.S. three years ago to improve my level in this sport. Uh, I've been riding GMC Flash almost like four months. Uh, the owners are it's Gustavo Mirabal that is from Venezuela too. He's been like a father for me. I know him all my life since, since I was a kid. And I mean, we have been improved really good. What are some of the things specifically that you have improved in coming to the United States? Well, I can tell in the competition level. I mean, when I came here, I was doing the children's in Venezuela. It was like a small classes. But when I moved here, I started doing the big classes with the, you know, with the best riders in the world. So that will, that things, you know, put me a lot of pressure and a lot of responsibility. So I started making a lot of efforts and trying to do my best. Was it a big change for you personally, the increase in the level of competition? Uh, yeah, here in the U.S. for sure, it's a lot of more competition, a lot of more riders, mm -hmm. much better horses, everything is much better here. So yeah, I, but I'll, I'm trying to do my best and I think we're going in the correct direction. What are your goals for today? My first goal is to get out of the ring uh, with my horse, you know, <laughs> riding my horse. No crash, nothing, uh, nothing of that type. But I think I'll, I'll try to do my best, you know, like any rider that's going to show today, try, the goal is going to try to go clear the first round. So I think if I, if I have luck and I ride, if I do my best today, we can do it, I think. Do you see any particular challenges out on the course so far? Well, I haven't walked the course yet, but I can tell you from here that it's really big and it's going to be really difficult. Do you ever get scared going to really big fences? I get scared, like, in the way that you always want to do a good job, you know? But otherwise, no, I just, like, pressure and nervous, but not scared because of the, the jumps, big or... Whatever. What are some of the things you'll do to prepare mentally before you go out to ride? Well, I'll try, I'll, I'm going to repass the course in my head a couple times before I get into the ring. Try to do a really nice warm up so my horse gets with a lot of confidence in the ring and let's see what happens. <laughs> and tell us about Flash. How old is he? 10 years old, Hanoverian. Uh, he's been doing these this classes a long time with a Rider from Venezuela, Pablo Barrios, the best rider from Venezuela. And he's been jumping every day with me much better, and I think we, we get really nice. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Flash? The way he jumps, and the way <laughs> he always wants to try to win. Is he Super a good, good. Is he a good partner? Is really, good? really nice partner. Yeah. Well, we wish you the best of luck today. It was really a privilege to speak with you. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. Your time. Thanks to you. After the break, meet Ireland's leading lady, Lisona. Hey. 
Tara, you had an amazing summer in Europe with your beautiful girl. Tell us a little bit about your horse and you. <laughs> She's an 11 year old Irish bred mare. Um, been riding her for probably two years now. Uh, we just brought her along slowly and uh, this year in Florida, she started doing the big classes and uh, she's great. We were second in the Nations Cup in, uh, in, in Florida and then we went to Spruce Meadows where she was third in the big Grand Prix there. And uh, then we went to Europe and did two shows, Hickston and Dublin. We won uh, both Nations Cups, so it's been a good summer so far. How long have you been partnered with Lasona? Uh, just over two years now. So she was originally uh, imported from Ireland by Kevin Babington who's also jumping in the class today and then she was ridden by Martin Huggins who's a friend of ours and I took over the ride two years ago. Are you familiar with her Irish roots? Yeah, she was actually bred by uh, uh, John Lenningham who actually rode in the Army Equitation School so it's a lot of history behind the whole thing. And what are your expectations and goals for today? She's been jumping great all summer, you know, um, she just came back from Europe two weeks ago, you know, I'm expecting good things today, hopefully, you know, everything goes right, you need a bit of luck on the day, but, you know, with her performances all summer and that, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping it will all be very good. From what you've seen so far of what's set up of the course, any particular challenges or unusual obstacles? Yeah, it's unusual because they have a new set of jumps. You know, we've been here all week, uh, but this is just a new set of jumps that came in last night and they're, you know, you know, a little bit spooky and that. And the so course seems rather technical compared to other years. So um, I go early, so I'm not going to get to watch that many go, but uh, just uh, have to trust my instincts. How does it look size-wise compared to what you jumped in Europe all summer? Uh, it's bigger. You know, at this level, the, the, you're always expecting, you know, big tracks. Um, this is very decent today. The oxers seem very wide. As I said, it seems technical. There's a couple of tall verticals. And, uh, you know, just have to see. Well, I don't know how she's feeling after the first or second jump. Usually she tells you how it's going to go. So hopefully the feeling is good, you know, so we can go from there. So tell us a little bit about your background in Ireland. <laughs> Uh, I came over here probably 37 now. I came over here 20 years ago when I was 17. Uh, I just came over for a couple of months experience to the, the winter circuit in Pan, Pan Beach and I ended up staying ever since. So um, I worked for a few different people. I worked in Pittsburgh and then uh, in the Midwest with Margie Goldstein and I've probably been doing my own thing now for 10 or 12 years. Did so. you come from a horsey family? I did, yeah. I'm from Sligo in the northwest of Ireland. My father rode, and my, my father still runs a business there with my brother. Um, my father rode in the Irish team for many years, and that, so um, it's, it's a lot of, uh, we grew up with horses. So you've got it. the pedigree for it. <laughs> That's, I, didn't, I didn't know anything else. So. Oh. Well, listen, we wish you the best of luck thank today. It was wonderful to chat with you, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. In March 2013, Lisona headlined equestrian sport again as she was sold to 22-year-old Jessica Springsteen, the Olympic hopeful daughter of legendary rocker Bruce Springsteen. A few stalls away, Irishman Kevin Babington readied his mount, the Irish bred Mark Q, who just so happens to share the same sire with Lisona. I am from Ireland, but I've been here for over 21 years already. So, um... I, my, I got my start in Ireland. I was an event rider mainly before I got involved in show jumping. I got involved in show jumping when I was about 17. And then I had the fortune of wor uh, work, working for Frank Chapeau, and Frank and Mary Chapeau for a couple of years in New Jersey. And then I moved to Pennsylvania, started my own business, and I've been doing that for about 15 years now. And do you feel that being Irish, coming from the land of the horse, gives you a competitive edge? Uh, well, it's where we gain most of our experience and just um, horses are just part of our culture and, you know, we grew up around them and I think it definitely uh, carries over to part of our success for sure. And tell us about Mark today. We talked to Jessica. She told us what she does to prepare Mark. Yeah. What are your preparations on the day? On, well, what, this is a very big event, obviously. It's a million dollar class. We don't often get to jump for that kind of money. But I think that for me, I try not to change things too much. Um, you know, we have a formula, just flat work in the morning, try to get them as relaxed as I possibly can. Um, we did a big show last week, sort of in preparation for this. We jumped the $250,000 class in New York in, in the Hamptons, and he jumped really well. He had last jumped down, but jumped well. 
and then I did uh, the Grand Prix on Friday. I didn't jump off, I just jumped him in for the first round. He was clear, but I saved him for the, the class. And the rest is just trying to keep him relaxed. Okay. He is an Irish bred, he's by OBOS quality. Uh, Derek Kearns also has a horse by the same sire. And um, it's becoming a very popular stallion in Ireland now at the moment. And I've had him for a year and a half now. What is the most special thing about him? Um, He's, he's very brave, um, he is also careful, he, he's a little sharp, um, but I think that's part of, his, part of his quality, but he gives you 110, 110%, sometimes the rideability gets a little in the way, but it's coming, it's get, it gets better all the time. Well Kevin, we wish you the best of Thank luck you. today, Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, you're welcome. Jessica cares for Kevin Babington's Smart Q. Jessica, can you tell us a little bit about what you do to prep for an event like this? Um, luckily, Mark Hughes is a really simple horse. We do we keep him really fit at home when we get him to the shows. We like to do a lot of walking to keep him fit, but he also has some um, some great help. We have Bill Stanton does body work on him, and we have an acupuncturist that comes in. That just it really helps him immensely and and helps to relax him. Now, how often is that treatment, and how close to competition? We usually do it the day before, um, and then Bill will come and check in with him the day of the show. Just you know, make sure he doesn't have any sore spots that we need to look at and, and checks him over before the class, the day before the class. So what are the things that you do? <laughs> <laughs> we try to stay really relaxed too, um, stay busy if you're here, you know, Q doesn't like to be fussed with too much, so we just try to stay active, watch the other riders go. So he is an Irish sport horse? Mm -hmm, he is. Is he from Ireland? He's or? from Ireland. Mm -hmm. He was in Ireland till he was a seven-year-old. Um, he brought him over and we got him as an eight-year-old. So we've had him for a few years now and we're lucky because he's, he's a typical Irish horse. He, he loves the water. He loves when it's mucky out and we're lucky to have him. So what are some of the things you'll do um, before Kevin gets ready to ride him? Do you do the tacking up? The, the I do. I do um, everything. We'll, we'll take, I'll take him out for a walk right before, then I'll groom him, make sure he's really clean, put all his tack on, and then just talk to Kevin about you know, what we have going on, what the class is going to look like, and, and any last minute details about how Q feels today. So are you responsible for the fitting of the tack and yes. how the pads lay yes. and the boots? Mm -hmm. Everything that has to do with Q I take care of. Is there more pressure added when it's an event like this? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's a huge it's a huge crowd and the jumps are big. You want to make sure everything is just perfect and you it's not a class you want to head into less than 100% for sure. Well, we wish you the best of luck Thank today. You. It was great to chat with you. Thanks so much. Get in the winner's circle. Thanks. Thank you. Of 38 entries, only three returned for a jump off. The trio had crowds on the edge of their seats in a fast and furious dash to claim top prize.
Lisona jumped a spectacular clean round, but incurred a time fault. Mark Q had one rail down, and Lewis had a score of 12 faults. Watch complete rounds and class highlights online at hrtv.com. When Unbridled returns, Rodrigo Pessoa and Laura Chapeau share their experiences on course. We ride so many rounds over, over the years, you can just analyze immediately what you've done wrong and I knew it was not really the, the horse's fault and that's why I'm more disappointed because it's something that I could have avoided. I try not to change my ride too much from what I normally do with him. Um, he's a horse that I generally ride strong and forward anyway, so I think that suited this horse. Rodrigo, you are such a beautiful rider to watch jump. One tiny rail. How was the course out there? Look, the course was uh, was pretty tough. Uh, we didn't expect any less with the with the first uh, today in this uh, in this class. But it was a, a nice course to ride. It was technical and it was big, but not uh, not over the top. And the uh, horses are jumping it pretty fine. How did you feel your horse handled it? My horse handled it uh, really well. I thought, you know, he's nine years old. He doesn't have much experience at this level. And uh, I think he handled all the difficult parts of the course pretty good. And I think that the mistake uh, the mistake that I had, I can take it on uh, on my account. Maybe I pushed him a little bit too, uh, too much. But uh, apart from that, he jumped really well. How do you personally handle dealing with that mistake when you come out of the ring? You had such a perfect round yeah. otherwise. Yeah, you know, that is uh, that's just show jumping. If you don't have everything right, uh, you just, you know, have the have the rail down and it was not unlucky. He, he had it down pretty, uh, pretty good. So um, you just, you know, you ride so many rounds over, over the years, you can just analyze immediately what you've done wrong. And I knew it was not really the, the horse's fault. And that's why I'm more disappointed because it's something that I could have avoided. What did you find the most technically challenging part of the course? Well, for me, for me, it was the line with the water because he's a little bit scared of water, so I never really know his reaction. And but he was really great to the to the water jump, and then he let me really slow him down to that double, which is very delicate after the water. And then uh, you know, in a in a class like this, you cannot leave anything leave anything on the table. Everything is difficult. You know, the jumps are big. You want to make the a good time in case you have one down, so uh, you really want to jump fence by fence and, uh, and and do the best you can. And what is your itinerary with Winsome after today? Well, he's uh, he jumped his two weeks now here in, uh, in the United States, he did Southampton, and this week he's going back to Europe tomorrow. He'll have three weeks off and then he'll fly to uh, Rio at the end of this month. So we have a very big five star in our home country, so he'll be doing the Grand Prix there. Rodrigo, thank you thank for your you. time. Thank Privileged you very to speak much. with you. Thank you. Rodrigo's rail cost him a place in the jump off, but he earned $75,000 for fifth prize. Laura Chapeau didn't fare so well. A refusal at the water kept her out of the ribbons. Laura, you put in one of the bravest rides I have ever witnessed over such a huge course. How did you do it? Well, I'm really proud of my horse. He's only eight years old, and this was a big step up from him. It's for sure the biggest course he's ever jumped. So I thought he gave it a really good effort, and I'm really proud of him. I think it was a good test for him, and hopefully he'll grow from it. What gives you the courage out there going to those big fences to tell him, hey, come on, we're jumping? Well, I have a lot of faith in him. He's been a great horse for me, and um, I believed he could do it. I just had to make sure he believed it, too. 
And what is some of his background with you? Um, I got him when he was five from the claim ward, and I've been showing him in the young jumper division, bringing him up through that. Uh, and he started the Grand Prix earlier this year and won three Grand Prix over the summer here in Saugerties. Well, that's impressive. What was your game plan going in? Did you know that you would have to give that type of ride to him or any expectations? I try not to change my ride too much from what I normally do with him. Um, he's a horse that I generally ride strong and forward anyway, so I think that suited this course. When you come off of a ride like that, that seemed like it was super confidence building for him, what is the next step? Do you continue at that level or do you take it back a little bit and clean up the he'll, edges? He'll probably take a uh, next class out, which should probably be something a little bit easier for him, just um, for his confidence, just a nice class, and then I think he can start to move forward again. What kind of horse is he? What is his breed? He's Cell Francais uh, by Demont de Semolé. Mm -hmm. And what are the um, plans for him over the next six months? Uh, he'll probably do a small Grand Prix, maybe something close to home, and then he'll show at Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania National. And you have such an amazing human pedigree. Does your dad help you at home and your mom? For sure, they're both, um, they're both a significant part of my training, and they've been crucial to me getting to where I am now. Well, it was really a privilege to speak with you. Best of luck. Congratulations on your award today. Thank you. Thank you. Hits is now home to three one million dollar Grand Prix. Next time on Unbridled. There's more horses in the world today than there ever have been, and the, and yet there's less use for them, practical use for them. So why are there more horses today? Well, it's simply because they have adapted to our life. So they're very, very changeable, very adaptable. That's next week on Unbridled with Susan Kane.